You guys ever hear that saying, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me? Well, uh, what happens if I'm the one fooling myself? So last episode I talked about how I recorded a whole bunch and it turned out to be bad footage. So I had to restart all over again from scratch. Well, I kind of did the same thing this episode as well. I recorded a whole bunch. Uh, it's probably worth an hour's worth of stuff. It was mostly just progress updates, but still, I recorded a whole bunch. And then I realized that the audio was not on at all. So I had to restart. And so then I restarted only for like a minute. And then I realized <laughs> I still didn't have my audio on. I was still muted. So uh, basically I'm an idiot and I swear to you guys that I will not be an idiot anymore. I am, I am uh, losing all idiocy as of this moment. But here we go. This is Ian XO4's stacking raid farm. It looks pretty intense to build. It actually wasn't too bad. But in the previous recording, which we will not mention anymore, I actually showed it working. Uh, I talked a little bit about how it works. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you basically the results. We get a bunch of emeralds. Down here you can see a bunch more emeralds. There's emeralds down here as well right there and this row as well here we have redstone gunpowder sticks glass bottles which we use in our mud farm I'll show you that in a second and a few more goodies and this is the leftovers everything else gets burned away so this farm is absolutely amazing i also had over 100 levels i think i had like 106 levels or something and we use those levels to trade with villagers to get this shiny diamond armor. I didn't want to have to use my diamond ore. So I bought some uh, diamond armor from some villagers and then I did the trades myself. And so you can see here, not perfect armor, but pretty darn good armor. I just have a few more enchantments to add to like the boots and the helmet. But that's pretty good. That's a pretty good start, and I still have a bunch of levels left over. So this farm, man, this farm is ridiculous. It is, it is a lifesaver in so many ways. And as you can see, this farm is super close. I started in the village, just went across maybe 100 blocks to this ocean. So guys, I'm telling you, this is a killer seed. This spot where I'm at, is absolutely amazing because not only do we have the farm super close where my house go there we go but we also have right over here boom the pillager outpost is super close to the village as well and there you can see on the hill just poking through the fog we added some buildings to our skyline there we go, there's a pretty good foggy shot. Anyway, let's get closer. Let me go show you these buildings. If you're looking at that right there, that's that's the void trading tracks that we used. Still gotta get rid of those, but don't worry, that's uh, that, it's not gonna stay there. I don't wanna spend too much time showing you guys these buildings because they're all just works in progress, but I can give you a quick little tour. We have this first nice little house with the copper roof and man, that is a lot of copper. Right next door we have this other nice little white building. Still need some texturing done. Again, these are all works in progress. But you can see we have the moss and the grass kind of climbing up this roof. I think it looks pretty cool. And we have another copper roof. And I actually want it all to be that weathered, that uh, pinkish color right there, not the green. I just don't have wax yet, so I have to go in and manually strip those. And as I said before, these are all works in progress. I still have to do the pathways and the landscaping and add more details, more structures, get rid of this little scaffolding here. But you can see that we've been able to make use of that mud farm that we made last episode. And then you can also see this nether portal right here. Hello, sheep. <laughs> I had to put this nether portal on the roof because the desert and mesa and savanna and ocean, warm ocean 
they're all very far away and so this was the best way to get there and so that's where we got all that sandstone as we actually went to the desert instead of just mining up the beach so here we are in our lovely starter house and you can see the copper in this kind of pizza oven mud farm thing has oxidized and I think this is the colors these are the colors that, that I like and so I'll try to keep those but again I don't have wax or anything so I'll have to go ahead and strip those so now we just hold down left and right click and you can see as soon as we place the, the dirt it gets converted into mud and then we take out the mud and replace it with another block and in order to get this farm up and running, we had to use a lot of water bottles or glass bottles. So you can see there, there's a bunch. And then this dispenser has to always remain completely full. So that's why I wanted to build the raid farm first before we got this running, because that's a, that's a lot of glass. That's a lot of sand to collect and then glass to smelt just to get all these bottles. And last episode, we made this little concrete maker. I did do some tweaks. I got rid of the hoppers because they were just unnecessary. And I figured out that I think part of the reason why we had some missing concrete blocks at the end was just a bit of lag. I think the blocks showed up later, but also some blocks ended up up here. So this thing does work. It doesn't eat my concrete. And then I don't know if you guys noticed back here, but we have a problem with these boats. I moved some of these bees. I figured I'd need some, some wax here pretty soon for these rooftops. So uh, I started to try to collect some, but it's really slow to do it manually. And then we get these bees in these boats. So again, there's another farm that we're going to have to build. It's raining. Another farm that we're going to have to build but uh, we'll get that fixed up in a little bit. Oh, guys. Guys, there's a creeper on me. Oh, man. Oh, he's right there. I don't know what happened to my bow. I lost my bow in between episodes. Oh, my goodness, guys. I don't even know where that guy spawned. Is it? Is it a thunderstorm right now? It's not. Oh, my goodness. Whew. Okay, cat protect me. In case you didn't know, creepers are afraid of cats. Okay, let's get, pull this guy over here. Are they afraid of dogs too? I don't think they are. Maybe that's a closed door? Oh guys, I don't like... And you know what? Let's just... Uh, maybe let's just let them despawn. <laughs> so with these buildings over here, I would consider this texturing to be pretty basic. Doesn't take much. You just have to find some block variants that work together. And it's not too hard. This rooftop is maybe a little bit more... Um, a little a little more tricky a little bit more advanced but again nothing ridiculously hard but today we are going to build something that I would consider is advanced texturing maybe even over the top texturing so right here I'm gonna build a barn and I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make this barn I want it to look old and weathered just like the other buildings but I wanted it to look like sun bleached and just really weathered and textured and I tried a lot of different things in a creative world to figure out how to do it I tried a gradient at first that didn't really work I knew I wanted to use the dripstone block but I couldn't really figure out which blocks to use with it but eventually I got something that I think looks pretty sweet some of you Probably aren't going to like it. It's uh, a little maybe over the top, but I think it looks pretty cool. You know, if I don't like it, I can always change it later. And these are the blocks that we're going to use. You can see we got dripstone, pointed dripstone. That, uh, that is the, the key to the whole puzzle. I think it looks pretty sweet. 
And then we got a bunch of wood. We're gonna make some like fence posts and, and stuff out of this wood. But uh, I think it looks. I think it's gonna look pretty sweet. And the reason why I'm building a barn is because last episode we made this villager breeder, and it is horrendously ugly. It's uglier even than these default village buildings. So this is actually what the the barn is gonna replace. Is we're gonna actually make the barn into a villager breeder and a wheat farm. And I think it's gonna look pretty sweet and I'm a little scared. So I'm gonna go sleep now, get rid of this rain. All right, it is IRL the next day and the barn is done. I'm up here on this hill cause I just wanna show you guys a little bit of the barn at a time. So if we just peek over, we can start to see the roof. There we go. Yes, there we go. So we got this nice rusty roof with a little bit of a gradient. It goes from this bright orange to a slightly paler orange to the mushroom block, to the coral block and the andesite. And I think it gives off the, the rust vibe pretty well. Maybe if we back up, we can get, uh, that's okay. We'll get some further away shots. Uh, the, I think the further away you get, I think the better it looks, the more it sells the rust. Anyway, I'm really happy with that, but honestly, that is that is not even half of the texturing that's going on. So let's let's uh, let's go ahead and make our way down. Just a little closer shot of the roof, and boom! Oh, look at that! Hopefully, you guys think it's as cool as I do. If you look at this wall here, we got lots of stuff going on, but. What probably draws your eye the most is this pointed dripstone, and I I just think it it uh, I think the colors and also how it kind of slims down I felt like that was kind of like the best block that sold this. Uh, you can see the reference picture I used sold the look of this kind of uh, sun bleached type of thing, and then you know, if you notice behind the drips the pointed dripstone blocks, I have a slight gradient going on. I have some darker wood textures and the coarse dirt. And then gradually up here, it turns to this uh, stripped birch wood. And, and so you still kind of have this dark to light gradient feel, but then you also have the pointed dripstone kind of all throughout. And I think it looks great. And these signs, for a while I just had the pointed dripstone and it just didn't, it didn't look quite right. Didn't look like a wall. Uh, it was too 3D, so throwing up the signs, I think, just does a really good job of just making sure this whole this whole thing looks like one single wall with maybe some divots and stuff in it. Anyway, I think it looks really cool. Let me show you the other side. Here's a front, and yes, we did do the interior, so we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Let me show you this side. It's very similar to the other side. There you go. And let me see if I can give you a kind of a far away shot. Unfortunately, the signs are entities and so they'll go out of frame. There, yep, see, there you go. So if you go too far, you kind of lose the signs, but I think, uh, I think it's fine. I think from far away, it still looks pretty good without the signs. And then that roof, I think it looks really awesome. I really think it looks like some dripping rust or, or something like that. And then the back here, I kind of did uh, just a little bit less texturing because I think we'll see that less. But let's go back to the front again. We have these nice big barn doors opening up, maybe some, um, well, I forget what those are called, <laughs> but they're there, those are there. Nice big hayloft on top. Press F1 here. You get a good look at the interior. We have a nice little hay storage, hay up above as well. We have this little uh, chain that they you know, use to pull up the, the hay. And on that side, it's trap doors. Here's where we're gonna put the, the little wheat farm. It's not gonna be anything crazy, just getting a little bit of wheat as we go, I think will help a lot. And even on the inside, I really do like the texture of the walls. There's no point of dripstone in here, but I, I really like the walls. I think it looks really cool. And then if we make our way up the ladder, again, we have some hay up here, a lantern for some light, 
And then this is going to be the, where the village reader is. So let me hit F1. And then, so this is the villager breeder. It's probably not the optimal size, uh, especially because we have this wood interfering it. But I don't, it's not like I need to be cranking out 100 villagers per hour or anything like that. So I think this will work just fine. And then I even have these trap doors set up. Oh, okay, let me uh, actually set them up for real. Okay, there we go. So now I have these trap doors set up so that when I want to turn off the farm, I think I just need to flip those trip those trap doors and then since the villagers can't pathfind to the beds anymore, I think that turns off the farm, but I'll have to do some testing. And then the baby villagers, they'll see the beds, this will be closed. They'll see the beds and they'll fall down right into here, into this little uh, trough, I guess. And from out here, the villagers can't escape or anything. And right there in that corner where that trap door is, I'll have kind of an underground area, underground tunnel actually, where I'll leave the villagers somewhere else. And so all I have to do is flip this trap door and the water will take them to that corner. So I think that's a really cool setup. So now what I got to do right now is I got to get two villagers up top. I got to get a farmer villager down here, which I suppose I could just wait for uh, one to breed. And then I got to get this wheat farm up and running. All right, so here we are at the villager breeder, and I'm going to show you guys the same method that I used to bring the villagers over to the raid farm. And it actually worked out super, super easy. So fingers crossed it happens the same way now that I'm on camera. There we go, this guy's all primed up. Put water right here, he'll float up to the top. And then wait for him to come, hop out, close it off, close that off. And now we got these composters here. And he'll come, since there's no drop site blocks nearby, he'll be instantly attracted to that one. And then I just kind of like to string him along. So place another drop site the composter break this one and he should come over here and I'll put this bed down or this boat down and now we can just make our way over to the wheat farm and when we break him out of the out of the boat we should start to see him follow the path the composters. There we go. There's one. Villager is going to want to sleep in the bed. I do have beds up there, so let's see if he'll pathfind up to the beds. He will. Aha. He'll go up here. And then we'll just block that off so he can't escape. And then when he wakes up, he should be able to fit through this gap. I had to remove this trap door temporarily. And yeah, he's a little stupid, so let's remove that trap door. But there we go. That's our first villager locked and loaded. Okay, here comes villager number two, although he's straight away walking off in that direction for some reason. There we go. He's just dancing around. <laughs> there we go. Now we got him. This villager breeder should be ready to go. Just gotta open up these trap doors. And now it's just the waiting game. We gotta wait for them to breed up. Gonna get a baby here. There we go, guys. And down he goes, right next to me. Perfect, so this will be our little farmer. We can actually go ahead and bring him in. So now you guys get to see the farm or the breeder in action. We could tip him down like that. And normally we just pop him down in that hole, but instead we're gonna let him loose in here. Let's see if he goes. Or if he has a mind of his own. 
All right, there we go. The villager is in place. So now once he grows up, we can give him a bunch of wheat seeds and get a collection system going. And then we have ourselves this nice, neat little wheat farm and our beautiful new barn. Let's get rid of these. Also, just uh, another added benefit of using the point of drip sound is we get these occasional drips, even though there's no, even though there's no water above them. These will still occasionally drip, which I think uh, just lends itself to kind of an old build. So that's another cool added benefit. So for the collection system on this farm, I decided to go with the allays. And there's actually some allays right at the pillager outpost right across the river. And so I went ahead and wrangled some allays and brought them over and put one of work into the farm. And then as far as the drop-off station, let me get this shield off my hot bar. There we go. As for the uh, LA drop-off station, we just have this note block inside this hopper minecart with a hopper running into the chest. And then in the back, I kind of threw this uh, aesthetic together. We'll change these blocks around and make this look uh, better. Here we have this simple uh, dropper clock. So we have a dropper right here. And then let me get some dirt. Let me show you inside. We have a dropper right there filled with a bunch of junk items and it just shoots the, the item out onto this pressure plate and then after five minutes this will despawn and it will unpower this torch which will then repower the dropper and so this is basically on a five minute loop which is perfect for us because we just need this to go off once every five minutes in order to make sure that all the items that end up uh, on the floor from the farm get picked up by the LA. Okay, so we'll go ahead and leave this running for a little bit just to make sure it works. I got my camera here set up and we'll be able to see if there's any, th any issues with the farm or not. All right, so a little while later, it does look like the farm is working because we have four wheat in here. I did have to make a few tweaks like I added this hopper here because this LA, it was originally attached here and it couldn't make it all the way around the corner, so I, I moved it to right there. And in order for it to reach this note block, it oftentimes is just, is just short. So I actually added that extra hopper, and I think, I think things are working well. All right, everyone, that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments what, if, what are the kinds of things you wanna see, what are the kind of building projects or cool farms and I'll try to incorporate that. But uh, thanks guys, catch you next time.